All right. I want to touch on aggressively targeting panfish through the ice. You know, oftentimes when we think about bluegills, crappies, perch through the ice in the wintertime, we think about finesse approaches, downsized, tight-lipped fish, cold front, cold water, slow metabolisms. But I'm going to tell you that these bluegills, these crappies, even these perch, they are aggressively taking down minnows. They are feeding. They are just as hungry under the ice as they are open water. Uh, now, I'm not saying we're throwing you know, big crankbaits at them or giant swimming lures or big gaudy spoons, but there are aggressive approaches I like to take to catch these fish. Even on negative days, like I said, even on days where you think this bite would be tough, I'm getting fish to get triggered on these aggressive presentations. And I'm talking fish of all sizes. I've, I've had six inch little bluegills, eight inch crappies come and T-bone some of these presentations. Uh, so these work on fish of all sizes. And I've seen even on pressured lakes, I guide in the metro area of Minnesota, uh, the epicenter of ice fishing. Uh, it's insane how many anglers are on the ice right now. It's awesome to see that big of a turnout. Uh, but I'm dealing with pressured fish, pressured water, you can't find spots to yourself. You have to zig when somebody else zags. And I found that these techniques that I'm going to show you help me catch more fish on pressured bodies of water as well. Even when you're fishing these, these schooling fish, we've all gone to the community holes and we've seen these fish piled up on the Vexlar. And you're going to hear the guy next to you go, those fish aren't going to bite. you got to wait until 3.52, the magic bewitching hour or whatever it is, to get them to bite. I've gone into those areas and caught fish on these non-traditional methods, these more aggressive presentations. Uh, many reasons to fish these things, and I'll show you this my rundown. I like the fishing because, one, it's something these fish haven't seen. Two, I can be aggressive, get that impulse bite, get the biggest fish out of the school right away. Three, effectively cover water and be more efficient. I can see the bait better on my Vexlar. I can get down quicker. I can get down faster. I can cover more water. I can hole hop. I can plummet this presentation that you're about to see through the slush easier. Uh, and I can get after some of these fish. I can fish effectively with gloves on because I'm not doing this to get that fish to bite. I'm working a more aggressive approach, covering the water column more. So this type of approach for bluegills and crappies has really helped me seal the deal on more and bigger fish the last several years. And uh, I've been using this approach even through my college days 20 years ago to get fish to bite. We just have better systems today, whether it be the rod and reel set up the line, the, the presentation, the actual lure offering out there than we had 15, 20 years ago to get the job done. So I'm going to go through three spectrums of presentation and why I would use each one and how they've helped me catch more fish. For starters, I always like to start with the most aggressive approach I can get away with and, and dictate my reaction from there. In recent years, it's been a spoon. I'm using 16th ounce spoons. That happens to be the pinhead minnow from Clam Outdoors. No bait. I am not tipping this with bait. It's something I've been pushing for years. Uh, turned a lot of anglers on to using this spoon without bait. It's a small profile, fishes fast. Fish is aggressive spoon, you can see that on the rod. It's not that big. The entire spoon top to bottom of the hook is maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. The spoon itself, the body of the spoon is less than an inch. It's got a flapper bait blade and a thin wire hook. That thin wire hook is critical. Do not change that out. Many anglers like to upsize the hooks on their spoons. I do that all the time when I walleye fish, when I catfish, when I'm fishing in the boat, I'm changing my, my hooks. Don't change the hook out of that because that thin wire hook, in my opinion, is what gets that fish to get snagged. They get it in their mouth, they can't shake it loose, and they get snagged. So they're going after that spoon, it triggers them to come in, they see that flapper blade, they go to suck it in. The absence of weight, that hook, again, is so thin and so small, I can't even hold that still, that in the water it's darn near neutrally buoyant, meaning that when a fish a finicky bluegill, a weary fish comes in fast, like you see in your Vexler, because you're working this spoon, you're working the water column, you're getting fish to come in and see what's going on. They sometimes come in, put the brakes on. That's still an aggressive fish. It's just not sure what it wants to do now that it sees what it's starting to look at and what it's going to feed on. And what they oftentimes do if they turn into that finicky mode, they start to move their 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 uh, fins and they start to change their mood. You can see it on your Vexler, you can see the change of that that mark. 
They come in, they suck in. They try to nip at that to taste it. Well, guess what? That thin wire hook swings into their mouth. You got them. Because then they shake and set the hook. You got that fish. So not only will they aggressively crush that spoon, but they will come and snip at it, nip at it. And they don't, they will, they're trying to get that flapper blade. And I think putting bait on there or plastic on there actually hinders the productivity of this lure. So I'm fishing this just like you see it. I'm fishing it on a, on a noodle rod, a 30 inch noodle rod. You can see that nice flex tip, solid backbone hook setting power. I'm fishing a, a Spooler Elite Reel. It's a two, three to one gear ratio. I can pull this line out and drop it down. That's important. We oftentimes just bomb that spoon down to the fish with a spinning reel. I work it down. Even in 25, 30 feet of water, I work this spoon down. The bait goes down fast. So as fast as I can pull a line and work it down, I can get it go, to go down to the water column. But I'm also not missing fish. Oftentimes a fish comes in under your cone angle, 10 feet off the bottom. I would have missed that fish if I bomb it down with, this, with a spinning reel. So I work it down with a fly reel setup, a spooler setup, and three pound test monofilament. Great setup for using that spoon. And then when the fish works up, you can see that rod tip. When the fish gets onto the bait, I'm working it away. I'm still working it. You never stop that lure and that rod tip stops moving like you saw right there. That loads up, still has not felt nothing in the fish until I do that. And then I got a battle on my hands and hopefully I bring that fish up through the hole. So spoon, no bait, small profile. That's the 16th ounce pinhead is oftentimes how I start my approach. Now I get, like I said, I can plummet that through slush in my hole. I can fish it with gloves on. I can be aggressive. I can shake. I can hop. I can dance. And I can be super efficient on the ice, hole hopping to find these fish. Depending on their mood, if they're really crushing it and they're getting away with it and I'm seeing fish come in, chase the bait, maybe miss it, maybe swipe at it, I will turn to a jigging minnow. And this happens to be the brand new Tika minnow from Clam. This bait is awesome. We got to play with it last year. We've all used jigging minnows over the years. Many brands have come out with them. Uh, Clam is not the first to the scene with this lure, but I can show you some things that make this lure different and how I fish it. For starters, it's all one piece, all one piece zinc alloy. It's not, does not have a plastic fin. I'm not breaking fins. I'm not losing that sort of stuff. So it gives you the most durable option out there. And then it's got some phenomenal color patterns. And this thing really swims, dances, and glides around in the water. I can get this thing to shoot two, three, four feet off to the side, really trigger fish into bite. You know, this is going to be on the more aggressive side of fish. I'm not necessarily crushing bluegills on this presentation, but perch love it. And you better have a pair of forceps if you're crappie fishing with it because they will destroy this lure. You've seen Jason Mitchell, hopefully on his TV show, a few weeks back use that lure for crappies and you need to force up or toothpick that lure out of that fish's mouth almost every single time so this is a more aggressive approach i'm snapping it i'm letting that bait dart you're getting fish to bite it on the fall and you have to pay attention to your line when your line's slack and going down and you see it twitch or pop that fish is taking it on the fall you're not really enticing the fish up like this you're working an aggressive snap let it fall down it takes a second to fall down i'm working an aggressive snap let it fall down and then i might work my pot or my shakes away up away and you're watching your line and your rod tip you're getting used to how this bait performs in the water and then a bite more often than not is when something out of the ordinary happens your line doesn't fall the way it should huh it should fall a little faster well you may have a fish on it oh man it just the line just darted across the surface of the water, you may have a fish on there. Or when you're working that pause sequence, you see that broad tip just dull for a second. Those are things you pick up on as you fish this bait more. I'm using a clam frost ice braid on this. You know, a five pound test braid works wonders, super thin one pound test diameter. You can go up to a 10 pound braid with a four pound test diameter, I believe. So you can use a little heavier line on this and I'm using a medium light action solid graphite rod and a spinning reel with this one and i can cover a lot of water effectively i can target deep water panfish suspended panfish shallow water bluegills or crappies i mean and cover a lot of different areas with that tika minnow so that's my first one two punch to be the most aggressive you got your spoon you got your swimming lure your your balanced minnow here to cover a variety of spectrums both work exceptionally well for aggressive panfish and again we haven't touched the spectrum of bait i have not talked maggots minnows 
anything like that yet. I am still fishing hard baits, whether it's a spoon, swimming lure, no bait, getting after it. I can effectively fish these with gloves on and truly whole hop to stay on top of fish and find where those schools of big crappies are going. And next, if I need to enter the realm of finesse, I'm using a size eight drop kick. You might not be able to see that one. I might have let the cat out of the bag. It's black and chartreuse. I love that color. It's my go-to drop kick color. Size eight drop kick, chartreuse XL poly a larger profile plastic xl minnow xl jamie there's various mackie options that are larger they can are, are denoted by that xl term after their name this is an xl poly you can see that tail just dance so this all together is oh boy an inch and a half of closing in on two inch profile but now you have that that tail that tantalizing tail to get that fish to focus on so if i feel like i need to maybe change my approach a bit and not hop as much and inter integrate more shakes and dances and subtle movements. I'll go to a larger number eight jig and an XL poly, XL minnow, XL Jamie, something of that effect, larger profile plastic to get these fish to go. Again, I can fish this aggressively. It punches through the slush. I can cover all different types of the spectrum of water, whether I'm shallow pan fish and weeds, basin panfish up along the bottom suspended panfish over isolated pods whatever it might be and i'm fishing again fishing a 30 inch noodle rod spooler elite combo because i want to cover that entire water column three pound test monofilament on this one and i'm getting after it so between these three setups i feel very confident i can target panfish 70 75 percent of the time in the winter i can get them to bite on something like this Many of you may look at me saying, I don't fish anything that big for panfish. Matt, you're crazy. I encourage you to try it because if you come out fishing with me, these are probably the first three rods set up on my wheeler, set up on the back of my truck, laying in my fish trap. And then from there, if I can't get them to go on this, I will turn towards my size 10 drop kick, size 12 drop kick, size 12 drop jig. You know, something of that nature, smaller finesse pl plastics, Mackie minnow, maybe a Mackie minnow cut down. And now we're talking more finesse applications, but to stick onto the topic of aggressive panfish, again, to run through this, I am fishing a spoon, 16th ounce pinhead, no bait. There's many variations of this kind of spoon in the market, all different kinds of brands, but that's the type of spoon I'm fishing. Small profile spoon, no bait, keep it moving. Don't let the fish sit and stare at it keep that bait moving even if they come on it work it away from them work the bait away from them they're never eating something dead still in real life and i'm fishing a tika minnow this is your your swimming lure your jigging minnow this gets you a lot more erratic action this gets that impulse bite remember to bring the forceps remember to bring the the uh toothpick from cold snap if you're fishing this lure because there's a lot of hooks on it and you want to make sure you get it out of them fish's mouth quickly and effectively and then I'm fishing a larger profile panfish jig, usually a size eight with a larger XL series plastic. Man, you can see I can't even keep that bit, that plastic still. It's just bouncing all over the place. It looks that way down in the water, very enticing. And again, as you've noticed, none of these approaches are calling for live bait. You can effectively fish them in cold, warm conditions, gloves on, no gloves on, and get out there and chase some fish. So those three great approaches for aggressively targeting panfish. If you don't have those in your arsenal, I encourage you to at least dabble in that realm, give it a shot, build some confidence on it, and go from there. So when the bites, when they're crushing the fish and you're going nuts on what you've always used, switch to something like this. Give yourself that confidence and that peace of mind to know they're eating these aggressive presentations as well, and then start your next day with that approach. I bet you I make a believer out of you, and before you know it, you're fishing some of these aggressive presentations to catch more bluegills, more crappies, more perch this year on the ice.